So thank you for joining us here again on windservetoots.com. Um, in today's video, we are going to be talking about the DHCP server. Um, it is you know, not an incredibly complex uh, server, but it is essential for most organizations. We're going to be talking about just a couple things as far as security as we go through this install, and um, just some things that we can do to help secure an innately insecure protocol. So if you followed us with for the IIS and application server roles install, this is going to look pretty familiar to you. So we're just going to go from the server manager, add roles. So what we're going to do, I'm going to wait for this to pop up. And as you can see, we have the DHCP server option here. So we're going to let that select. It's going to start the wizard here. We're just going to go next. And we're going to select mostly the defaults. This is asking us what interface do we want this DHCP server to broadcast IP addresses on? What domain is this going to go in? And what's the preferred DNS server? For this, WINS is not required on our network. If you have some legacy applications that use WINS, you may need this. But trying to get away from proprietary protocols is always good. Um, this is a scope. Um, what a scope is, it is a block of IP addresses that your DHCP server will give out. We will actually see how to configure this later in the video. And this is where we are going to change the default option. Um, many people, there is a large push to move to IPv6. It does offer security benefits such as IPsec, but I am always of the mindset is if you are not using something in your environment, if you're not actively using IPv6, then you shouldn't have it on. So we're going to turn that off. Now it's just asking for the administrative account credentials to authorize the DHCP server in Active Directory. And what authorizing the server means is that active if your DHCP servers are in Active Directory, so if they're member servers in Active Directory, and one DHCP server is authorized and one is not authorized, the authorized server will broadcast IP addresses out to the subnet. And if it is not authorized, it will not respond to DHCP requests on the subnet. So that's what this is. So we have our summary here, and we are just going to install. As you can see it's pretty quick. This is a pretty small machine. It's just got about one gigabyte of RAM in it. Um, it's a Windows 2008 R2 machine, single core. Some people will say you need really beefy um, DHCP server boxes, but uh, you know if you configure your leases, um, a lease is how long a client can have a, an IP address in the DHCP server, and let's say they're a week or a month. Um, it's only literally a four-step process that the DHCP server and client will go through, um, so it's not really that intensive. Uh, now, if you are, um, let's say, dishing out addresses for thousands of clients, um, then yeah, it could be a problem. But So as you can see, the DHCP server installed. We did get a little error there. Um, just We'll take a look at it. Let's just see what this says here. See, and as you can see, the server is not authorized to start. And what we can do is we can right click on this DHCP server here and we'll do unauthorized. This is actually, uh, I had done a test on here before, so I'm going to do unauthorized and authorize. So this is how you can authorize and unauthorize your systems on your uh, on your Active Directory network. So you see we have two subnodes for IPv4 and IPv6. We are not using IPv6 so we don't have to worry about that. Now um, by default we will go through and we want to configure where is it at here? We want to configure this server to use an I or a specific user account to um, to make dynamic DNS updates um, in Active Directory. So here 
here we go so if you right click on your scope here and you do properties and advanced sorry, it took me a minute to find it there and then this right here dynamic DNS dynamic update registration credentials so if the default here for uh, registering dynamic DNS updates is a that a server your DNS server will be a user in a group account this does not allow secure um, dynamic DNS registration updates and the reason you want your DNS updates to be secure is so that whoever adds the records they're the only one that can delete the record and you can't do that with the default account so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move over to our domain controller and we're gonna use that shortcut dsa.msc to open our active directory users and computers panel and there we go I'm fired up here and now when you create this user it only needs to be a basic um, you know just a user it doesn't require any permissions so we're gonna create a new user and we'll just call it DNS DHCP for lack of a better creative word so DNS DHCP and the default password just give it a nice strong password at least eight characters or more and we'll finish there and we might want to set this to never expire because if all of our DHCP users are using it, it could be a problem if it expires. So what we're going to do, DNS, DHCP, that's the name of our user. Our domain is winservetoots.wst. And the password is, I'm not going to tell you. And there we go. So we have this here. If we do a refresh, now you will notice. So I want to show you something. When you unauthorize the DHCP server, so we're going to unauthorize this, right? Now we're going to refresh. You can just hit the F5 button on your keyboard. Look, see how it is now has this little red arrow there. Hopefully you can see that. And let's go back and we will authorize it. And if we hit refresh again, see here you can see the difference IPv4, IPv6. One is red, one is green. We're going to refresh this again. And so there we go. Now the server is authorized. Okay, so what we want to do here is we're going to right click on our IPv4 option and we're going to create our scope. Okay, so new scope. And this is going to be the block of IP addresses that we're going to give out on the network. And in this particular case, so with our network, it is we're just gonna call it something that lets us know what it is and so we'll do 250 or I'm sorry 200 through 250 because that's the IP addresses that I'm gonna let this DHCP server give out we'll just call this default for lack of a better name so we do there so now this is the start IP address and the end IP address so this will be 10.10.10.250 and 10.10.10. I'm sorry. Let me do this again. Change this here. And we'll do 250 here. And the configuration for the subnet mask. The subnet mask are the bits that um, tell how many hosts and how many subnets are in the network. Um, so can just do that and you as you can see once we filled in the subnet mask it already changed the length there so that's good and this is an exclusion address so let's say we know that we want um, a particular workstation to have a static IP address and it's the IP address 10.10.10.201 you can actually exclude that here so but we don't need to do that now and how many days do we want our DHCP um, IP addresses to be good for? Well, you know, for me, I'm comfortable with two weeks. That's okay. Um, there's not really, I mean, some people may say there's an inherent security benefit with IP addresses changing faster, but nothing that I would say would be relevant. Um, now, do you want to set DHCP configure options for the scope? Sure. Um, 
this is an IP address for a router so this would be your default gateway so for this we'll use 10.10 .10 and we're going to use 103 it's just a server that I have on the network there where I use a router and the domain this is the parent domain this is the DNS server um, you could add another DNS server in here we don't particularly have one set up on this network in a production environment you would want at least two so we'll go next and this is for wins we don't have any win servers and yes we do want to activate this scope so that's it that's how easy it is to set up a DHCP server on your network um, it's not incredibly difficult now we want to test this see if this bad boy is actually giving out uh, DHCP addresses and here we have a Windows 7 machine and as you can see I'll just show you with the IP config it has no media connected it has this is the IANA um, 169 address that Microsoft will assign to interfaces uh, if there's no DHCP server so we're gonna get rid of that it's okay it doesn't doesn't even let us and we're gonna hit renew and let's see if this uh, DHCP server okay so look we got the first it happens very fast we have the first address in that DHCP scope 10.10.200 so and we should have if we do an all oh yeah you can actually see the default gateway there but let's do an all so it gave us our DNS server so this is a fully functional DHCP system um, and what we should see is look we have our workstation now here listed in the address leases so hopefully this was a, a good tutorial for you if you weren't familiar with Microsoft um, DHCP uh, in the next video we're just gonna have some discussion about some of the new features uh, you can either watch it. it it does relate to a little bit of security and a little bit of redundancy so if you check it out hopefully you'll find that valuable as well thanks for watching this first video on DHCP and thank you again for visiting windserve